Hey guys, it's Elisa, and today I have a book review, and I literally just finished reading Better Kingdom, so please excuse this. <laughs> I wanted to record it right away before I forgot, and because I really enjoyed it, and I can't wait to talk about it, so I went ahead and read the Girl of Fire and Thorns trilogy, so I did go ahead and finish all three of them and I'm going to talk about them. So first off, I'm going to kind of go with the non-spoily, spoily, wait, <laughs> non-spoily stuff so that in case you guys don't want to be spoiled, you're not. I'll just kind of give you a quick kind of a quickie review, I guess I should say, on the three books. So the first book that I went ahead and read, of course, was The Girl of Fire and Thorns. This book starts off the journey for Princess Elisa, and we get to know what's going on. I mean, right off the bat, the first chapter, she is getting married, so that's not really too spoily or anything like that. I think I've mentioned it in my Friday reads, so... It goes off from there and it's a journey of understanding, of discovery, of why she was married off and things like that. Elisa is a a bear. What a bear is, is a person who upon her naming day is blessed by God with a God stone. And there's like these prophecies and she's kept very ignorant about what these prophecies are. With the first book, I gave it 3.5 stars because I was a little annoyed with Elisa. <laughs> it sounds like I'm talking about myself. I was annoyed with Princess Elisa because of things. I mean, I understand it's not her fault. Like she is kept ignorant. So... I was just a little kind of like, uh, okay, and then as it progressed and she grew, started growing as a character, I really enjoyed it. I liked the action in it. I was very surprised with the things Ray Carson did, which I will go ahead and talk about in my spoiler part, but I was very, like, wow, like, wow with what she did with the first book, and it was, like, towards the ending, so... Yes, I did go ahead and give it 3.5 stars. There is a lot of God references. Like, religion is a huge part of this world. Really huge part of this world. And at first, that kind of annoyed me. Because it was like every single other sentence was something about it. And I was like, okay... I mean, I don't have a problem with religion or anything like that. It's just I wasn't expecting it to be very, very, very there, like, all the time. But you kind of get used to it. The second book, The Crown of Embers. Yes. <laughs> the Crown of Embers. This one was flipping amazing. I gave it five out of five stars. It is so action-packed. It's like there's never a dull moment. Things are always happening all the time. And then the way it ended, I was so upset and I'm so happy that I didn't have to wait for book three because, oh my god, the way it ended, oh my god. But yes, book three, The Bitter Kingdom, it is one of the bigger books out of the th the trilogy. The first one's like 400, the second one's like 410, and then this one's like 438. So it gets progressively bigger, but in this book, there is a never a dull moment. There's never a moment where you're like, hurry up, get to the point, or anything like that. It is so action-packed, and there's so many things that are going on because Queen, at this point, Queen Elisa, has to learn all these things about the prophecies, and then there's this these wars going on. There's, like, a big war, and then there's, like, a civil war going on. Like, somebody is trying to take over her, her throne. Is that a spoiler? No, that's not a spoiler because I didn't tell you who, so... <laughs> There's a lot going on, like a lot. Like, I was kind of worried. I didn't think everything was going to go ahead and get wrapped up at all. Like, I really didn't think so. Like, I was afraid that there was going to be, like, a lot of loose ends, but there's not. This book was so good. Like, I literally, as soon as I finished it, I was like, ah. <laughs> and then I was like, I have to record it to tell you guys about it. So, all in all, 3.5 
for the Girl of Iron Thorns, a 5 out of 5 for the Crown of Embers, um, Better Kingdom, 5 out of 5. All in all, for the whole trilogy, I give it a 4.5 altogether. So I would recommend it, especially if you love fantasy, kings and queens and princesses, and there's a lot of action and journeys, and, and yeah, like, there's not much that I want to spoil for you in the non spoily part, but I would recommend it if you like those type of things, and yes. Okay guys, so now for the spoily part. So, what I liked about this book, this is not the book, <laughs> what I liked about this book, <laughs> I liked that, I liked the action part of it, I liked that little by little she was starting to mature it just wasn't as fast as I would want it to be but I understand why it had to be the pace that it was why it took because this book is broken up into three parts like I'll say part one and it's so many chapters and then part two and so many chapters and part three you get the gist so I get why it took the length of time that it did for her to kind of progress but that's what was kind of an annoying me <laughs> on there but I I like that she was finally growing I liked the relationship she was gaining I loved that even though King Alejandro was at the beginning teaching her or treating her I should say as like she was friend or like he never really was looking at her as someone like as his wife like you know what I mean I mean he had a mistress on there and when Elisa found out it was just really heartbreaking for her which was a little weird for me because she really didn't know him so for her to be like I guess she was maybe infatuated with him or he was a really good looking man so I, I can see where she would like him but I don't know it was just kind of like world ending for her which was I get why she was really she's 16 so I get it but it just kind of whatever annoyed me and I'm not even like keeping to the things that I like but I like her relationship with Jimena I like how she becomes this warrior towards the end of the second part of the book of the part two section of it um the i love that ray carson has no problems with killing people off like i was amazed when she did what she did like there is and this is like a huge spoily part there is a character named umberto that she starts falling for and it's kind of mutual and it's it has it wasn't anything more than a couple like of kisses like things like maybe two and there's this scene in the book and he's like killed right in front of her and it's very wow like I was like oh my god you just did that like you know what I mean I was like I was like you have no qualms with killing people <laughs> I was so afraid of how this story was gonna go but it got me super excited it got me excited because there was like no hold bar like she was like she I was like oh my god at the end of this trilogy like the main character could be dead like that's what I like gleamed off of it and I was excited to get into it and that's what kind of because it happens right before you get into part three and then part three is just kind of like oh my god like you know kind of going and then again she freaking kills someone else and I was just like someone very important and you're like what the oh my god like I was like it got me excited and I'm sorry to say that like it sounds like really weird to be like excited that she freaking killed two people off but they were like really big characters you know they made a huge difference in these books so or in this story so I was like oh my god like you know so I really enjoyed that I did not like a lot of the religious stuff like don't get me wrong, I have nothing against religion. I grew up Catholic, went to Sunday school and CCD and things like that. I don't mind it, but it's just like this whole world is based on religion. Like they're always, and because we're following Elisa's perspective, like she's always praying and it's like, or she's always like having conversations with God and it's like, or, you know, praying because of her Godstone and stuff like that. And it's just, it kind of annoyed me like it just felt like it was like choking me with all this prayer and stuff but 
by the end of, or I should say by the beginning of book two, I was okay with it. Like I was in a place where it didn't bother me as much, I guess, because I, I didn't know that it was going to be so much prayer in the books that that's why it kind of caught me off guard, but I didn't have a problem with it by the beginning of book two, Crown of Embers. What I liked about this book was Elisa's finally queen. She was coronated, of course, in book one, but like this is her reign. There's still a lot of action going on. There is the inviernos, 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 whatever. They're threatening the kingdom. Like if she doesn't bring herself in, that they're gonna like destroy everything. At the same time, she's on a journey to find out more about her godstone. There is said to be a gate. Or well, actually, they said that there's two gates. One leads to life, one leads to something else. Not life, death, I guess. doesn't necessarily say death, but such a kind of gleam off of it. She reverts to being, like, very... And that's what annoys me. She reverts to being, like, the Elisa from the beginning of book one, where she's very indecisive around King Alejandro. When she becomes the leader of the Man uh, Maleficio, she is, like, a really strong character very strong very decisive very like it's hard choices but she has to make them and she does them and it's like she reverts back to being the Lisa that we meet at the beginning of book one and it kind of got on my nerve I understand why because there's something that really happens crucial at the end of book one that I want you guys that that one is not something that I want to spoil for you that leads her to kind of be on her own like you know but I love that Hector, who is the commander chief, is there like right behind her to kind of be a strength to her. And I love that relationship of, you know, there. I love the way it's evolving. Elisa's starting to have feelings for Hector. She is starting to finally fall in love again after a lot of heartbreak and, and death. She's starting to care for him a lot. You kind of can tell that he's in love with her too. She's just a little blind to it. And being her age, like I can, I can understand why. She is already 17 at this point. So with not really having a lot of experience with love and boys and stuff like that, like I can get it. Jimena is her handmaid, also her guardian. She makes all these like brass decisions without like taking at least into consideration sometimes and that annoyed me. I wanted to slap the bejesus out of her, I don't know how many times, on there, but I get that she's trying to go ahead and protect her. The Invierno, there's a character that we are introduced to, is Storm. They have, like, really, really long names. It's really weird, but you cut them really short, so his name is Storm. Inviernos don't lie. He used to be an ambassador, and he says that he is Elisa's most loyal subject, so he helps them kind of learn the reasons why um, Inviernos are doing what they're doing, like, what they're trying to get back, basically, the whole story is that God saved Elisa's people many, many millennia ago and left them in this land, and they always thought that they were the first ones to this land, but Inviernos were always already there, and as these new people were brought to this land, they messed around with the way Inviernos magic to work because it was always like a magical kingdom so they're like angry about it that we cut them off we kind of killed a lot of them off and and things like that this big thing that happens at the end like you finally find out that there is someone in her own kingdom who is trying to overthrow her she is betrayed very horribly Jimena helps with Hector getting kidnapped or not kidnapped getting taken hostage that's the word <laughs> she fires Jimena, she makes her leave, like, she doesn't, like, take her feelings into consideration, like, he, she's like, Jimena's just doing whatever the hell she wants, and it's not supposed to work like that, like, she is my, she is my servant, in a way, she's my, you know, handmaid, and she's not, she's, she's not queen, basically, she's queen, and they already know that they're under siege, they have to make kind of quick decisions, so she decides that she is going to hold a gathering of the queens, three queens, there is Queen Elisa, there's Queen Alodia, which is her sister, and there's another queen that I don't want to tell you guys about, I want you to figure that one out or read the book too that one on. But there's three queens and they are going to have a get-together to kind of 
make plans and agreements and laws and stuff like that. So she sends that out. She decides that the only way she's going to gain support and stop the civil war that is about to start happening in her kingdom is by marrying someone from the south, who of course is Lord Commander Hector, because he is from the south, and he is a son to, to a conde, so he is essentially a conde as well, which is like a lord, I guess, is the best way to describe it. Then we go to Better Kingdom, and this one picks up right where book two ends, and it's a race of Elisa trying to get Hector back before they actually get into the capital of Invierno, where it's going to be harder to kind of get out of it. And this one is so fast paced and it's broken up into four parts and I love that it interchanges point of views and that's what I love about this one just because Hector is no longer always right beside Elisa anymore. He's on his way to Invierno. So I love how his perspective is in it and it's, it's not every other chapter like with most changing a point of view that I've read before or anything like that. It's kind of like a, a couple chapters and then Hector and then a couple more chapters of like Elisa and then a chapter of Hector and stuff like that until they're kind of reunited. And then at the end, there's like this huge battle and I love because they are in separate parts of the kingdom of the castle or whatever, palace, that... I'm happy to know that I know what's going on with Hector, like what happens in his part, and I'm happy to know what happens with Agilisa. And she essentially makes herself emperor. So that's freaking amazing, like the way she pulled that off and the way she saved everybody. And I'm sorry if I'm ruining the book for you, but I loved it. I enjoyed it so much. It was always there was something always going on we finally get a sense of because one of biggest one of Elisa's biggest fears is what's gonna happen with the godstone like what's gonna happen afterwards with it like she always thought that she's gonna die and like you actually get an answer of what happens with her and the godstone so I love that and I'm not gonna tell you guys that part because I it's very you get an answer when her prophecy is fulfilled because everybody is always like she's always like well when is the prophecy gonna be fulfilled like what's gonna happen blah blah, blah. so we kind of get an answer to that in the godstone and then there's like a big battle and the good guys win and then there's a wedding and I loved it I loved Hector and Elisa and I enjoyed this book so much I am gonna I recommend it to anybody that likes fantasy who likes a lot of action and there's magic and there's romance i truly enjoyed it i hope you guys enjoy this review i'm so sorry i know it's kind of scattered brain right now from everything that i recorded i honestly don't know how this is going to end up i hope it doesn't sound as scatterbrained as i feel that it is just because of the length of time I've been recording and stuff like that. So I hope you guys enjoyed this review. If there's any books that you have read that are kind of similar to this or any suggestions that I should go ahead and read, leave it in the comments down below. You guys have a great day and I'll talk to you soon. Bye!